Tiffany Espinosa and welcome to Flip Time from Children's Museum Houston. Today we're going to be learning all about using a flip kit. We're going to be reading The Very Hungry Caterpillar written and illustrated by Eric Carle. The Very Hungry Caterpillar tells us all about the life cycle of a butterfly. We'd like to thank Penguin Random House, the publisher of The Very Hungry Caterpillar, for granting us permission to read this book as part of their temporary open licensing for online story times, read aloud videos, and for live events during this difficult time. Today I'm going to introduce FLIP, an exciting program for kids and the grown-ups who take care of them. FLIP stands for Family Literacy Involvement Program, and it was made especially for you by Children's Museum Houston to encourage your love of reading and learning. We have more than 250 FLIP kits, and they come in different languages. We have kits in English, Spanish, Chinese, Vietnamese, Arabic, and Urdu. And many of our kits are bilingual, written in two languages. This is what a flip kit looks like. It comes in a yellow mesh bag, and you will find these kits at your Houston Public Library. At the library, the flip kits are kept here. That's Flip the dog. He sits on top of each of the kiosks. In the library, you will see the kits hanging on hooks on the doghouse. Look for the title that interests you. We have great kids books inside our kits, so find a title you would want to read for the first or maybe the second or third time. Inside the kit you check out, you will find a project case. And inside the project case, there's a book, and the book may be in English, Spanish, or in both languages, or in other languages. An activity sheet. This is for you and your adult to read to help both of you to enjoy the book and the activities that you can do after you read the book. A supply sheet. These are the things you need to return to the kit when you are finished reading the book and do the activities supplies. These are things you will need to complete all the fun activities you would do with your grown-up. And then there's some papers. These papers are for your grown-up who is helping you. Some are for your grown-up to keep, like these milestone sheets. And this paper, the survey, is for your grown-up to write on and return to the library. If you do that, you get a ticket for six people in your family to come to the Children's Museum Houston for free. So let's look at the flip kit for The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. We'll read this book together now. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. I wonder what might be inside. Let's find out. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. Hmm. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five 
oranges. But he was still hungry. Oh my, that was a lot of fruit. Oh, what more can he eat? On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. Oh my. All of that in one day. Did you find your favorite food? Here? Mine is cheese. <laughs> oh, but that night he had a stomach ache. Mm. Does not feel well. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And after that, he felt much better. Do you feel good when you eat green things? Like spinach and broccoli? Now he wasn't hungry anymore. And he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big fat caterpillar. Mm. <laughs> he built a small house called a cocoon around himself and he stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and what do you think? He was a beautiful butterfly. The end. So for the Very Hungry Caterpillar, we will be doing a math activity using a graph. So we have our colors, our color paper here. And you can get some color paper from home and make a line across to make, um, to make a graph. So they'll be the same, um, the same spacing apart. And we have some different color fruit. And we'll have some different types of fruit. We have oranges, apples, bananas, and pears. And what we'll do is we'll sort them out. So let's take a look. We have some apples and we can put them on our red, since they're the color red, our red graph. And we'll see how many of those we have. Let's see, so I have one, if you can count with me, two, three, four, five, six. And if you see, if you look here, each fruit gets its own space. So make sure you don't put two fruits in one space. No, each one gets its own space. That's called one-to-one -one correspondence. One to each its own space. And then we have our oranges in the orange section. One, two, they don't want to stay put, three, four, five, six. And I wonder how many bananas we'll have. And they're the color yellow, so we'll put them in the yellow section. One, two. And then we have our green pears that will go in the green section. One, two, three, four, five. Now let's look at our graph. What do we have the fewest number of fruit? Which color? Is it this one, our green one, our yellow one, our orange one, or our red one? This looks like it has the fewest. Let's see, one, two, it has two bananas. That's the fewest number of fruit. Now let's see which we have the greatest number, the largest number of fruit. This one looks, these two look like they have the most. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
they both have the same amount and they're both the largest number. So our apples and our oranges have the most fruit in them. So now we can sort and graph lots of different things. I have here some things that we found right here in our library. So if you want, you can go and look around your house and look for some items in your house that you can graph and sort. But if you want to stick around right here, you can sort these out and graph them with me, okay? So here I have some markers. Let me get these out of the way. We have markers. We have different types of clips, paper clips and binder clips. Let's see, we have some rubber bands and some screws. So now we have them all sorted into their groups. Now I wonder which one would be the bigger number. Which one do we have the most of? Would it be these really big markers? These small clips? These small screws? Or these medium sized rubber bands? What do you think? What do you think we're going to have the biggest number of, of items? Which of these groups? Let's go ahead and graph it and see how many we have of each. Okay? So we have one, two, and three. And if you remember, each object gets its own space. We don't want to put more than one object in each space. And then our clips, one, two, three. Hmm. And then our screws, one, two, three and then our rubber bands one let's get those to fit in our squares two and three well what do you what do you know they're all the same number there are three markers three clips, three screws, and three rubber bands. I was for sure that this would be the, the, the most because they're so big, but no, they're the same amount. Huh. So, like I said, look around your house, see what other objects you can find to graph, um, and see how you can sort them into different shapes, different colors. Um, here we have different uses. We have writing instruments, clipping things, tools, binding instruments, um, all different types of ways that you can sort your objects, even your toys, okay? And see how many of each you have. I hope you enjoyed this flip kit and activity. We encourage you to visit your library when it opens again and check out some more of our flip kits. In the meantime, go out into your neighborhood and look for caterpillars and butterflies. You'll be surprised to find that there are lots of caterpillars and butterflies crawling and flying about. Joining us today is our Director of Outreach, Armando Orduña, and his children. And they're going to demonstrate an activity we call Building Little Strong Little Sailors. So now it's time for us to sing Row, row, row your boat. So everybody grab an oar. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Rock, rock, rock your boat gently down the stream. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. Ah! Row, row, row your boat gently down the shore. If you see a lion, don't forget to roar. Roar! So now let's do another flip activity together. This time, we'll read Walking Through the Jungle. And this is, all, this is a really fun singing book. And you can sing it along with me. I'll sing the first line and you can repeat after me the same line. 
and we're going to see lots of different habitats and lots of different animals that live in each of those, those habitats. Walking Through the Jungle, and this is written by Debbie Harter. Look, this little girl's carrying a monkey. I wonder what other animals we're going to be seeing. Walking Through the Jungle, illustrated by Debbie Harter. Walking through the jungle, walking through the jungle, what do you see? What do you see? Let's see what animals we can see. I see a parrot, some pretty interesting butterflies, a monkey. Hmm. I think I see a lion roar, 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 chasing after me, chasing after me. And now we're in the ocean. Look at all of the interesting animals in the ocean, like a, a sea turtle, lots of different types of fish. Hmm, even this little aquatic bird. Let's see. Floating on the ocean, floating on the ocean. What do you see? What do you see? <gasps> I think I see a whale. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Chasing after me, chasing after me. Hmm, where are we gonna go next? Let's see. <gasps> the mountains, wow. Let's see, you can see some mountain goats. See an owl, even a bear down here. Is that a mountain lion or a puma? Hmm. All right, now we have to climb, okay? So let's get your climbing movements. Climbing in the mountains, climbing in the mountains. What do you see? What do you see? I think I see a wolf. Ho, ho, ho. Chasing after me. Chasing after me. Oh! <laughs> oh, now we're in the river. Do some more swimming. Maybe I'll do a little brush stroke. Swimming in the river, swimming in the river. What do you see? What do you see? I think I see a crocodile. Snap, snap, snap. Chasing after me, chasing after me. Oh my goodness. These trucks are very dangerous, aren't they? <laughs> Lots of wild animals. Trekking in the desert, wow, some desert animals. I even see some desert plants like cactus. And then look over here, there's an iguana, camels. Hmm. Trekking in the desert, trekking in the desert. What do you see? What do you see? I think I see a snake. Hiss, hiss, hiss. Chasing after me, chasing after me. I think a snake would slither after me, right? <laughs> oh, now look, that's a lot of ice. I wonder where we are now. Can we be in the Arctic? Hmm, in a tundra? Let's see, it says, an iceberg, yeah, that sounds about right. Slipping on an iceberg, slipping on an iceberg. What do you see? What do you see? I think I see a polar bear. Growl, growl, growl. Chasing after me, chasing after me. Oh, look at those teeth. Yeah, we gotta run fast across that iceberg. Huh. Running home for supper, running home for supper. Where have you been? Where have you been? I've been around the world and back. I've been around the world and back. And guess what I've seen? And guess what I've seen? Oh, look. All of her animal friends that she met along the way are there having supper with her. The little snake is eating a donut. A crocodile, some bananas. The polar bear is having ice cream. I think that's, that makes the most sense, right? Because he likes cold things. <laughs> and the lion is eating some potato chips. And look, look at the whale. He's spouting some water into her cup. That's cute. And the wolf is eating apples. 
and they lie down for a nice little nap. The end. Well, I hope you enjoyed our book, Walking Through the Jungle. Now we can do our activity. So looking at my instructions, it says that we just read a book about six different habitats and the animals that live in them. So we're going to be looking at some habitat cards and some animal cards and trying to match them up together. So I'll take those out right now. Put a few right here. here I have something that's like a snowy tundra. It's a very colorful coral reef under the ocean. Hmm, that kind of reminds me of the savanna. Like a prairie savanna. And here it's a pretty, um, pretty prairie with lots of flowers. I wonder what would live there. And this looks like hmm, a view from below and, and a forest. So those are my habitats. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to look at my animals and my insects that could live in those habitats. So the first one I have is a caterpillar. Now, where do we see caterpillars? I'm going to think about some things that caterpillars like to eat. They like to eat leaves, parts of plants. So, they would need something that's growing on the ground. I don't think they would live in the ocean. What do you think? No, I don't think so. They would probably like, what, flowers? Yeah, they would probably like to live in the prairie so they can eat on those leaves and get ready to be lovely butterflies that suck nectar from those flowers. I'm gonna match up my caterpillar with the prairie. Next up I have what looks like arctic wolves. Hmm. The arctic wolves, they like to live in places that are cold. So, I don't think they would live in the savanna. The savanna is pretty hot and dry. Here in this, these woods, there's a lot of color there. There's a lot of green. So I don't think that it'll be very cold there either. I think it'll be pretty nice and warm, lots of sun, right? What do you think about this? What do you think the tundra looks like? The tundra, is it very lush? Does it have a lot of plants growing? Is it very bright or is it very cold? It looks pretty cold to me. That looks like a lot of snow, right? Like it's winter. I think an arctic wolf would like to live in somewhere where it's very cold and snowy in the winter. Oh, and what is this? You remember that animal? That's a lot of people's favorite animal. It's a lion, right? We saw the lion in our, um, in our book there. This lion, where could he live? Would he live underwater? Hmm. I don't think I don't think um, well some cats do like the water but lions not so much right um, in the woods hmm now I think the lion would like to eat somewhere would like to live somewhere where there are um, lots of antelope to eat lots of um, of animals that are going around in the savanna right lions with their elephants and antelope Okay, let's take a look here. Wow, look at this colorful fish. That is so beautiful. Look at all of the bright blues, oranges, and red. Hmm. Now, I'm noticing something interesting about all of the places that we've picked. The caterpillar looks a lot like the flowers, the colors, right? That are found in the flowers. The wolf, he's white and the snow is white, so he can hide there or he can camouflage. The lion, too, he can probably hide and wait for his prey in the brush of the savanna because it's about the same color. So I would think that our fish, he would need some place to hide um, to camouflage himself from sharks or whales or any other type of big fish that would like to eat him. So looking at these two places, 
in this brown tree and this colorful wreath, where would he like to be? I think he would like to live in the bright cool coral reef. Not only that, but I think he would also like the water, right? <laughs> of course, a fish would live underwater. I think this is his habitat. And last but not least, a moth. And looking at his color, he's kind of brown like this tree. Look, it almost has the same pattern as this tree. I think that's a really good place for a moth to hide. If you've ever gone outside, probably late in the day, you might find some moths hanging around on trees. Or maybe even if you have a wooden door, they might like to rest on your wooden door um, getting close to nightfall. It's a nice place for them to hide away from birds and things that might like to eat them too. So this would be a good habitat for him. Well, that's our flip activity for walking through the jungle. If you'd like, you can walk around your neighborhood, look around your yard, and see what types of habitats are around your yard and what kinds of insects or even some animals that like to come by um, and live in those habitats. Or you can look on the internet of different habitats, jungles, tundras, um, woods, lots of different things and see what types of animals live in each of those different places. Pay attention to their colors and look up the type of things that they like to eat and see what's available to them in their habitat. Well, I hope you enjoyed doing the flip activity and reading the story Walking Through the Jungle with me today. Thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.